In this video, we will be going over how to calculate an engine driven by pistons displacement. This is the commonly displayed volume you see advertised, how to calculate the compression ratio of an engine, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of high and low compression ratio engines. We will start out by finding the engine's displacement volume. In order to find this, we will need to know the stroke length, which is the distance the piston moves back and forth. In this case, it is 10.6 centimeters and is marked in red. It is important to know the terminology for where the piston is at in the engine. If the piston is in the most compressed condition of the stroke, it is top dead center. This is marked in blue. If the piston is at the least compressed part of the stroke, it is bottom dead center, which is marked in green. We will also need to know the engine cylinder's bore diameter. In this case, it is 9 centimeters and is marked in purple. And finally, the number of cylinders in the engine. This engine has two cylinders. So to find the piston displacement, we need to find the volume of the stroke of the piston. To complete this, we can take the area of the cylinder bore, in this case, 9 centimeters squared times pi over 4, and multiply it by the stroke length of 10.6 centimeters. We get that each piston has a total displacement of 674.34 centimeters cubed. Now to get the displacement volume of the engine, we need to take the number of cylinders, in this case two, and multiply it by the volume displaced by one piston. So after plugging in our numbers, we get a total displacement of the engine of 1,348 cubic centimeters. This is 1.348 liters. Like previously stated, this is the common way engine volumes are marketed. Now let's move on to compression ratios. To calculate the compression ratio, you can take the volume of the combustion chamber at bottom dead center and divide by the volume at top dead center. In this example, I am assuming a perfectly cylindrical combustion chamber. In the real world, this would more than likely not be the case. So if we take the volume of the chamber at bottom dead center and divide by the volume at top dead center, we get a compression ratio of 8.07. This means that the volume at the bottom dead center is 8.07 times larger than the volume at top dead center. Now you're probably wondering, what is the importance of compression ratios? I have put together a simple matrix of advantages and disadvantages for high and low compression ratios. High compression ratio advantages are better fuel economy, more power due to being able to extract more energy from the air fuel mixture, and they have a more efficient burn which leads to better emissions. Higher compression ratio disadvantages are higher heat, the more you compress a gas the higher the heat gets. For non-diesel engines you need expensive fuel that is higher octane and higher grade. This is to avoid engine knocking or the detonation of fuel mixture before the spark. And they are generally more expensive and complicated to build and maintain. Low compression ratio advantages are that they generally are cheaper to build and maintain, they run on lower, cheaper grades of fuel, and they produce less heat. Low compression ratio disadvantages are that they generally don't have as much efficiency as a high compression ratio, they don't extract as much mechanical energy from the air fuel mixture, and they have more unburnt fuel in the emissions. That concludes this video. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully I earned a like, share, or subscription.